one of the things that health and like you just said, health and fitness, when we talk about a topic like that, we already have our minds made up. Like we already enter the conversation going, okay, I kind of already know how I feel about health and fitness. Now, maybe I get more information or maybe I have a desire that changes in me, but I kind of already know my stance on it often. I think most people feel that way. Today, we're talking about artificial intelligence. And I think there's a, there's a rare moment right now when there's not, we're not in the state of health and fitness with it yet to where people have their minds made up. Now, there's a lot of fear, I think, starting to bubble up in people, sort of, uh, you know, projection of their own fear, like their computers and robots are going to take over the world, right? You're Terminator. Take our yeah, it's Terminator 2. They're going to destroy everything or Matrix or run everything. There's some of that like doom and gloom, but also a lot of uncertainty. What does this mean for my career? What does this mean for my future, my children's future? Not just mine. Like maybe I'm an older person and that doesn't matter to me, but my children, grandchildren, my, my progeny, people that come after me. There's a lot of these questions that swirl around, but I think we have a unique opportunity right now in our in our time, especially the time of this recording, to help shape the way we think about some of these things coming online. And you will ask a really great question. When we first met you, you came to our profiler training program. You were one of our students. And at the end of profiler training, we recorded a live podcast with all the students. We got a, everybody in a semicircle did a uh, audio podcast together. It's published. If you're listening or watching, you go look it up, listen to it. Will's on it. I don't remember exactly what you asked, but effectively you asked this question. You said it was Dr. Dario Nardi was with me and Antonio. We were there kind of taking questions from students and just having a free form conversation. And you basically asked this general question, like, what do you, what do the three of you or what does anybody here recommend? Like, how can we be wise as people? What does wisdom look like? How do we be wise in our decision-making, in our thought processes and how we move forward? And I thought that's a really great way to frame today's conversation about artificial intelligence how do we think about this technology that when I mean, we've talked offline, you'll, you'll explain more. We'll go into some more detail, but it's here. It's like the, the genie's out of the bottle. It's not being put it back in. The, we're, we need to live with this new reality that's coming. It's already here and it's going to be coming more and more quickly. How do we approach this in a wise way? What does that look like? I think that would be where I could orientate this conversation it, where we don't get faded thinking like we do with health and fitness and we don't let it get politicized like we do with health and fitness. We don't let it get, you know, all the ego and the fear that comes in. Now, clearly all that's going to happen, but how can we approach it in a very careful, mindful and wise way? Mm. So that's where I want to start. Maybe the best place to start right now is let's just, what are we talk when we talk about artificial, intel, artificial intelligence, what are we actually saying? When we say artificial intelligence, what do we mean by that? So artificial intelligence is basically a uh, like a blanket term that we use for a lot of different um, uh, strategies for taking large amounts of data, running it through some type of thing, <laughs> some magical thing, uh, and outputting uh, results that sort of approximate what you would only expect a human's brain to be able to do. Um, and it's manifested in a couple of different ways. Uh, the easiest to see and understand are large language models, um, LLMs. And uh, the most famous example of that right now is uh, OpenAI's GPT-3 and uh, most recently their chat GPT. And basically that is at a very high level, it's read the entire internet and it kind of understands everything and, and uh, has an intuitive understanding of all of that information and you can ask it questions and it will give you a very human seeming cogent well-written prose response um, that for like basically any prompt that you ask it so that is uh, you know artificial intelligence is like people would say that's AI I would say that's machine learning but whatever it doesn't really matter um, there's also other versions of it that are used for generating images and more recently they're actually uh, uh, doing uh, videos with it as well but basically you can say like i want to see a cat on the moon in in a spaceship or whatever right and then it will have like a an awesome looking um uh, photo of that type of thing and so this is causing a lot of fear for people like artists um on the on the image generation side this is causing a lot of fear for people on the like writer side or uh, if you're a copywriter if you uh, do anything really that has to do with uh, written words which is i don't know almost everybody um, so there's a lot of fear being generated around what is this new technological umbrella going to do to um, impact all of our lives. And I think what I'd love to be able to end up doing by the end of this podcast is at the very least, give us the opportunity to engage in this future in a very optimistic way, 
because I think about this stuff obsessively um, and super, super interesting to me. And I think the most likely scenario is a very optimistic one. But we can create a self-fulfilling prophecy whereby we go the pessimistic route and it becomes uh, an issue solely by worrying about something that is coming down the line, which is to say AI as it's being manifest right now even is just so unbelievably overpowered compared to any other tools that we have access to. It's coming. It's here and it's coming and it's not going anywhere. And there's just too many economic and interest, like interest drivers, whatever it is. It's an inevitability. It's like a force of nature. And so when met with an inevitability, what do you do? Um, do you say like, no, I wish it wasn't coming. What's that going to do? It's just gonna make you feel bad within yourself and feeling bad within yourself will cage your thinking, will cage your, your feeling and will just lead to negative outcomes. Usually I might be wrong about that. You guys push back on anything that I say. Um, but if we can think about, okay, well, if it's coming, you know, if the puck's going down that way, how can we skate towards it in the wisest way possible? And I like that you framed it that way because AI and this technology in general does not have a past precedent. It is so unbelievably useful across every single domain that humans typically sort of project their meaning onto, you know, like a lot of people will have their meaning derived from the work that they do or the art that they create or any of these kind of stuff. And so when we have a technology that allows, you know, robots, whatever, to do that better than any human will be able to do it, then we're creating this new paradigm within which to be optimistic about that future, we kind of need to recalibrate our value as humans and what our role as humans are going to be in a, in a future where everything is basically taken care of by AI uh, in, in the professional realm and even potentially in the artistic realm. Although we can t talk about that more because it's not like a holistic thing. There's always going to be a space for human art, but it'll be a, a bit of a different thing. Um, anyway, I think the point that I'm trying to get at though, is that how do you be wise when you have no past precedent on something? And my best guess at this, and this maybe we can riff off of this is for people who have become an expert in one particular domain, like maybe you're an expert engineer or maybe you're an expert uh, coach, right, of people or something like that, there are a lot of trials and tribulations and learnings, uh, both the emotional ups and downs of getting to where you got to with that. And it's sort of like the understanding of the emotions inherent to becoming expert at something that train you in a very conceptual way, even like that you can, that you can transplant onto other things that's what it means to grow through the struggle, right? So if I've learned how to grow through the struggle of how to build like a really impressive engineering marvel of some, of, of some type, if I'm thinking, okay, I want to become really good at socializing now, there is some level of transplantation where I can be like, I know all of the struggles that I went through where I thought I could build this thing, but it turned out to be harder than it was. Yeah. And I'm like, maybe I can go and get a team and we can just do this. And like, there's this optimism of naivety that comes into play when you're trying to engineer things and like, wow, that kept getting crushed down, kept getting crushed down. I bet you there's a similar thing in this social dynamics thing. So maybe the wise approach would be to assume I don't know what I don't know and to, to approach learning this social dynamic stuff with insane levels of humility um, and not take the now hard earned competence and uh, feelings of worth and all that kind of stuff that I've attained in the engineering realm and transplant that over to the social realm. It's like, no, I'm gonna start to, um, at the beginning again. And so how do we do that with something like AI? Like how do we have no ego or no, like I already know how AI is gonna come uh, down the pike and, and whatnot, like how do we, remove ourselves from the ability to have preconceived notions, create a self-fulfilling prophecy based on us not wanting to change our opinions of how this AI stuff is going to play out.